So Jeff Winter from Microsoft reached out. Okay. Um, you guys may know Jeff, Jeff Winter from LinkedIn. Jeff and I have collaborated on a couple of uh, uh, panels before and you know, like behind the scenes, we talked together quite a bit. But Jeff asked this, sent this question because Microsoft's been working on some UNS stuff, right? And he said, how does the UNS relate to or differ from what people are writing about digital core? Okay. Common data model. Aren't these the same thing? UNS is just another term for master data model. Right. Okay. So the answer to that is, and, and there are a couple of other questions that um, people ask about um, unified namespace. OK, and so I shot this whiteboard video to answer these questions. <clears throat> the answer is. No, the unified namespace is not another term for a master data model. OK, uh, it is it can be a physical. It can be a tree based representation of a master data model, but it is not a master data model. Here's what the unified. um namespaces. And in fact, uh, I have a, a photo I want to make sure I include <clears throat> while I'm doing this. So uh, the unified namespace, in a nutshell, the best way to describe it, it is it is the structure and the events of a business. OK, so it is it is the single source of truth for all data and information in an organization. OK, so when we when you talk about what is the unified namespace, okay, it's important to understand where it came from. Like early on in my career, okay, one of the things that I discovered while I was looking at when I was doing projects for the employers that I worked for, the end users. So when I worked in the mining industry, when I worked in steel, when I worked in printing, when I worked in tier one automotive, one of the things that always stood out to me was how unbelievably inefficient our project process was and how unrelated each engineering project was to one another. Like there was no common infrastructure or strategy for how we would solve problems in our plants. It would be like I had a problem to solve and I would go and I would come up with some, I'd spec an idea, spec a solution. I'd have a problem statement. I'd spec a solution. Then I just go to like all these vendors and say, I'm kind of thinking about doing this thing. And all the vendors would give me recommend software and hardware, um, field wiring, um, engineering services that could solve that specific problem and that specific problem only. And it never took into account what I already had in place or what I might do later. It was always just that one thing. And I kept saying, well, fuck, that's so unbelievably inefficient. Like, why do I have data over here and now I have data over there and I've got data over there and I got data over there and I got seven or eight different vendors and, you know, and they don't talk to one another. And so if, if I've got data over here that I need to use over here, I can't retrieve it without spending a ton of engineering money in between the two. So the concept of the unified namespace was really about making it so that I could learn faster and get my projects done quicker. Like I, one of the things that frustrated me is that it would take me because I was, I was always starting from scratch on every solution. Yeah. I would, I would spend a year, you know, in a year I would do maybe three major projects, but I would be like, well, why can't I just do like a major project every six weeks? Like, and I could, if I was, if I was building, if I was solving problems on one common infrastructure, I could do that. So the unified namespace came from this idea that what I would do is just create one infrastructure. So, and that was back when we had Data Highway Plus. Okay, this is my career started in the late 90s. So I had DH Plus, and the first thing I had to do was gateway DH Plus to OPC, right? So whether I was doing that through Capware or, or um, you know, RS Links or how, however I was doing that, the first thing I had to do was I had to convert field protocols into a protocol I could use for common infrastructure. The first unified namespace was built on OPC UA. And the reason that I, or OPC DA really first, and then sort of switched to UA. Uh, it, it, M MQTT became the protocol of choice once I realized that pub sub was never really going to happen in OPC and that OPC was too verbose and 
you know, all the stuff that I talk about in terms of like, hey, you can't scale with OPC, DA or UA in the middle of your industrial infrastructure is because I've got the scars to prove it. I, I tried it many times. So the unified namespace came from this concept that in order, in order for us to have short time to value, that is be able to solve many, many problems, more problems in a year than we had been and make it so that we could, the, all the data that we collected and the information we created from solving problems was gonna be in one place. I had to create something like the unified namespace because what was obvious was that the vendors never considered it. The vendors were like, like Rockwell was always like, well, we only need a Rockwell store. And then, oh, we've got a Rockwell piece of software for that. Or we got a Rockwell hardware that'll be able to do that. Well, most of the shit you guys have is garbage. Like, I don't want to use yours. I want to use, like, I don't want to use that. You're a historian. I want to use um, Wonderware. Or I don't want to use Factory Talk View or Panel View. I want to use InTouch. You know, the, so that's where the unified name space came from, the concept. It, it grew over time. It really unified namespace as you know it today, as what I talked about today was created in 2012. And it was so that we could build, basically make it possible to build the largest standalone supervisory control and data acquisition system in the world that ran on one server. Okay. And that was the one that we won our big firebrand award for like that. This is, so I was the lead engineer on this project that had 19 developers. And in, in 18 months, we integrated across five states. This is all serial networks, okay? So this is all serial, cellular, VSAT, across five states, uh, 14,000 locations, 40,000 devices, PLCs, pump off controllers, uh, tank measurement devices, you name it. Um, 11 million tags, 2 million daily alarms, 2,000 concurrent users, okay? We had to be able to move assets from this location to that location or to, to this business unit to that business unit. We had to be able to uh, take assets offline, put them back online. We had to be able to group assets so that we could start them up in a, in a sequential order as a function of location and electrical load and value. I mean, all these things that we had to solve. We did the whole thing in 18 months, 19 developers for $1.6 million. The next closest bid was like 25 million. Okay. And the bid above that was 50 million. The unified namespace made that possible. Okay. So that's where the unified namespace came from. It solved so, I mean, it, it started, it came from how I solved problems in the early 2000s for my employers so that I could learn faster than all the other engineers. I could, if I was doing a project every six weeks and they were taking 12 weeks or they were taking 24 weeks or they were in, and the other engineers were doing one or two a year. Elon Musk talks about this. If you compare a person who works 40 hours a week to someone who works hundred hours a week, you learn the person who learns works hundred hours a week is doing 2.5 amount of hours uh, than the other one. And so they're going to learn a lot faster. It's the same concept. Okay. The unified namespace then, once we did that and we sort of became famous for it, you know, and I'm giving my, I'm doing my acceptance speech, which I think you can still watch and I'm up there holding the award and I'm, um, and Zach was there and, and all, you know, a bunch of other guys and I'm giving shout outs to all these different companies, by the way, three different companies that worked on it and I'm giving shout outs to individual people. All of that was built on the concept of the unified namespace and was not possible without the concept of the unified namespace. All these companies started reaching out to us and they wanted the same thing. So then we started refining what the UNS was. And so here's what it is. It is the single source of truth for all data and information in an organization. So, <clears throat> you know, you call, it's not the system of own ownership, okay? You can have many systems of ownerships for any different types of data plugged into a UNS but it is the single source of truth. So if I wanna know what the value of some parameter in my business is in context, so that parameter 
in a semantic context so that I can understand that this value is related to this asset in this way relative to these other parameters of these values, that's what the single source of truth is, okay? It's the structure in the events. So it's based on ISA 95. Generally, we structure organizations the way their ERP systems structure them. So if you were to go in and look at a master data model of SAP, okay, structure and events. Uh, by the way, I, we won that award when I worked for a different company. It's before I created my integrator. So I can't talk about it in too much detail. I can't, I can't talk about it as if it's an IntelliC thing because an IntelliC didn't do it. I just, I was the lead engineer on it <clears throat> for this other company and I'm the one who accepted the award. And uh, It's the structure and the events of your business. More importantly, this is how it differs from say digital twin or digital core. It is the hub through which all the smart things talk. Okay. Now that doesn't mean 100% of the things in your business talk through a unified namespace, but more than 80% do. You still have point to point integrations. You may have <clears throat> say a PLC that talks directly to some other piece of software, but not through a UNS, but any information or data they exchange, they put in the UNS, one or both of them does, okay? Um, and then it's the foundation of your digital future. So the things that you visualize in your organization, like what do, what do we actually, you know, what is digital transformation, right? It's con connect to the data, collect it, store it, analyze it, visualize it. Analyzing a lot of times is conversion of data into information. So if I take a data point that I'm storing every one second, and I want to visualize it over 60 seconds, I'm not looking at data, I'm looking at information. Because just the, the by virtue of plotting it on a chart, putting 60 of those data points on one chart, that's now information, okay? So we connect, collect, store, analyze, and visualize. All the things that you visualize in a digital organization, the vast majority of the things you visualize, they are visual representations of the structure and events that are in the unified namespace. Uh, Platts Hirsch. So what about big chunks of data, like images or video? Is this point to point? Can be, but one of the very first things we ever tested, so I'll tell you a little image thing. <clears throat> one of the very first things we ever tested in 2000, I think this was 2015, when Arlen Nipper gave his big MQTT presentation and inductive automation and sort of turned the, ind the industrial world on its ear. He flew out to Dallas after ICC. I, so he, he talks about when he gave his, his first presentation, there was this guy who stood up. You know, nobody really said anything. This guy stands up and he says, hey, if, you know, that, what just happened, he turns back to everybody and says, what happened on that screen just changed industry as we know it. That guy was me. When he talks about that presentation, he says there's this guy that stood up and pointed at the screen. He's talking about me. I'm the one who did that. And I literally pointed to everybody in the room and it was packed. And I literally said, that changes everything. Right after <clears throat> that presentation, <coughs> Arlen and Wes flew out to Dallas and met with our team. And one of the things I first asked Arlen was, Arlen, if I want to use MQTT, Sparkplug B didn't exist yet. If I want to use MQTT as the protocol, um, for my digital infrastructure, for a unified namespace. And I explained to him what a UNS is and how we build projects and solve problems. I said, am I true? Am I really not limited in what my payload could be in an MQTT topic? Like, could I send images? Could I send video stream? And he said, yeah. And I said, well, let's prove it. I said, if you prove that, I will, I'll, we'll use MQTT. And so what we did was we did a test in East Texas for an oil and gas customer who had three cameras over a cellular network on their well pad. And the way it was really set up was you would have to like remote in through a web server. Um, you'd, have to, you'd have to remote in through a web server and you would um, then view still images of what the wells pad looked like. What we said to uh, Arlen and Wes is we wanna be able to send one frame per second. 
So send a frame per second over MQTT. And Wes said, no problem. And they went back. I think they were in Kansas City or something. They went back to Kansas City. He came back the next week and he, uh, he, um, he proved that it, it worked over a 256k second, uh, 256k per second connection. We sent one frame, one frame per second, okay, or one video frame per second as a payload. So to answer your question, yes, you can send images and video over um, MQTT to a unified namespace, okay, um, but you can also do it point to point, okay. You can do it both, and this is where the architect comes in, okay. Um, all right. It last thing, the UNS is the foundation of your digital infrastructure. Okay. So is, is the unified namespace a master data model? No, it is not. Okay. Um, it is, it is the master data model, um, is a structure, but it, but a master data model doesn't have any events. One of the things that we tried to do with the unified namespace is combine the master data model of an organization, that is the structure of an organization, with the historian of an organization, um, with the actual raw events through an OPC server of an organization in one place. So I could see the structure, I could see the current value, and if I watched over time, I could see the history. And I could compare, I, I would automatically normalize every single data point. So at any given time, I could, if I wanted to see OEE relative to, uh, relative to some type of temperature or account, I could do that because the OEE wouldn't change. Every time the temperature changed, I'd just grab both. Boom, 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 boom. But if I go and do that from, say, a historian, <clears throat> That's a little, that's a lot more challenging. Okay. Um, because the historian doesn't store at all the same intervals. Okay. Um, so what we tried to do is combine the three together. Right. Uh, there was another question that someone asked as it related to the unified namespace. And I can't remember what it was. Um, <clears throat> 